Hey guys, welcome back. Alrighty, it is Great Fairy Fountain time. Now before we actually go over there, there's a couple of things I want to hit first. And just to kind of show you on the map, you can see I took the liberty of warping to Lydner's Brow Skyview Tower there. And what we're going to be doing is going after the, the Great Fairy Fountain Terra. Uh, she is, or Tetra, whatever her name is, she is over here. So we're pretty much going due east of Hyrule Castle. And we're, we're looking for this lake here. And I know we don't have the maps, but that's okay. Um, we're really just kind of going into the fringes a little bit. But before we actually go to that fountain, we have to go over here first. So as you guys know me, I'll be getting some loot along the way. Not only that, we really need shrines. So what I'm really going to try to do here is go shrine hunting without actually calling it shrine hunting because nobody wants to go shrine hunting. But in this game, since, you know, we don't have the access to the, the crazy hearty ingredients for all those extra heart meals and we can't just, you know, quickly dump everything into stamina and feel super powerful, um, essentially we're going to have to kind of pay a little more attention to the shrines along the way. So that being said, if you do feel like skipping ahead to the end, I'll understand. If you want to roll with me through the video, we'll get some croc seeds and some treasure along the way. Not to mention we're going to have, oh yeah, so just to show you on the map where I'm at now, I deviated just a little bit, once again talking about shrines, but there's also a croc seed here as you can see. So yeah, we're going to be getting a clothing item. And, uh, I always get that one backwards. All right, so yeah, back to shrines. Definitely going to take a few extra moments and capture some of these guys. Now, for right now, I'm just going to be activating travel gates. I'll go around and kind of go back through those shrines later on. Okay, so before we get going too much farther, there's another Karoxid right here in the area. There's also a Hanox down here. And just because I have a feeling this is going to be a bit of a lengthy video, I'm going to forego killing it. But if you guys do want it, I will point it out to you. Probably out of my line of sight, actually. He's right on the other side of that hill there. So for rough math, I'll just go ahead and mark that for you. All right, but back to our Karak seeds. Now there's really not much else right down here in this little area. So for now I'm going to take advantage of a teleporting gate. And as you can see that teleporting gate I just chose was, as you guessed it, Lidner's Brow once again. So just to kind of show you on the map where I'm out once more. I went ahead and warped, shot myself out of the cannon like the circus. But from here I'm going to detour just a little bit. Not, there's, not that there's any great loot here. Um, well, I mean, there can be, but I'll explain that here in a moment. So essentially what this is going to be is another quick shrine quest we can do. But in addition to the shrine quest, you can actually do a challenge here and try to get through this a little quicker, or I should say a lot quicker. To be honest, they're pretty challenging. you got to be pretty good about getting through it as quickly as possible. But again, I'll explain that here in a moment. For right now... What I'm really looking to do is just kind of land here on this island. Now guys, take the time to grab your Sunday Lions here. And honestly, they're super hard for me to see, so I'll probably miss a few. But do be aware, there's quite a lot here. Alright, but as far as the Shrine Quest goes, simply activate the... whatever that is. Terminal. Now you can do this any way you want, because we're not timed. But if you want to kind of redo this and do the challenge, you're going to be timed. So you can either, you know, for right now, you can either dive, you can pull out your glider if you need to. Uh, you can hit R and, you know, kind of get the the mobility around as you're skydiving here. 
But as long as you hit all the rings, you'll be golden. At least for the shrine quest here. Okay, now be aware, if you have two or less fairies in your pouch, you might see some fairies spawn here. So before you go nuts and start swimming all over the place, do be aware of that. And keep a shower out for some eye, eye for some fairies. Now I'm pretty sure I have more than two in my pouch, so I shouldn't see any spawning in regardless. Uh, but I can't, you know, promise 100% of these fountains up here in these sky islands are going to have fairies. But to be honest, most of them do. Alright, so as you can see, we got some goodies here. My magic formula is 10 every time I find a new one. Okay, so I'll show you on the map what I'm talking about here. Yes, I unlocked everything, which is what I was looking to do. Okay, so once again, there's some more Sunday Lions. Now, if you want to do that challenge where you have to do that skydiving deal, like, super fast, uh, this is the thing you want to talk to right here. I would recommend maybe activating the teleport here, the travel gate first. Just in case you decide you had enough, you don't have to, you know, figure out how to get all the way back over here. You'll already have a, a teleporting gate ready to go for you. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and activate the travel gate for now and kind of get a move on here. Now from here, there's actually another Karak seat up here. Once again, make sure you get that travel gate unlocked first. Just so you can get back up here quickly. Or back up here quickly. Now this is a little challenging. You're going to have to kind of skydive and spam that A button as you're diving. And try to catch that sucker in the air. If you miss, you miss. Just teleport back up and get after him again. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this little spot. Now from here I'm going to start kind of veering more over this way. But I'm going to take a little detour first. There's a spot here I want to hit. I'm going to have a Karak seed, but more importantly... There's going to be... Actually, no, we're not there yet, are we? I don't think I'm high enough up to actually get over there. Eh, it'll be close. We'll see what happens. I might have to do a little bit of climbing. I wasn't really paying attention there, and I skydived a lot lower than I really should have. Alright, but as you can see, like right in front of my glider there, you'll see that smokestack in the cabin off in the distance. That's kind of the direction we're heading for right now. There's going to be a croc seed there, uh, but again, more importantly, the two caves. Now, one cave, it's not great loot. It's going to have a horriblen nest in there, and uh, what I'm really after is that bubble gem. So I'll just kind of be quick in, quick out on that first cave, and then the second cave we're going to hit, there's actually going to be a clothing item in that one. That's going to be the, the frost shirt or something. It essentially enables you to increase your attack power in colder climates. Which, you know, is kind of cool. But at some point I just feel, felt like I was changing clothes too much in this game, and I didn't really use it. And I didn't use the, the warm weather attack power up one either, whatever that one's called. Just again, I kind of felt like I was changing clothes too much, and... Alright, so speaking of colder climates, now we've only got the one piece so far. Uh, sometimes if you're high enough up in altitude, that won't be enough. You'll need high level cold protection. But feel free to combine that one piece of clothing there with a low level cold protection meal. And that'll provide that high level cold weather protection that you're looking for. Alright folks, so again I'm looking for this Karoxy. Now there's some bad boys standing around here. Some red bobkins, I believe. Uh, nothing great on loot. Again, it's just kind of here for the Karoxy. But notice that little bit of light gleaming through the window. That was pretty cool there. But before I really investigate the cabin, uh, just to show you on the map where we're at now. Uh, I will take care of these guys just because I want the chew jellies. And I think if you get the headshots with this bow, that'll two hit him. No, it will not. I'm not going to do this all day, obviously. All 
Alright, now beware of this guy with the shield and the ice thing there. I don't know how that didn't turn into a fire chew jelly there with him having a lit torch, but hey, I'm not judging. So yeah, if you try to strike that shield with that ice jelly attached to it, as you can see, it kind of exploded into some ice burst there. So you kind of want to keep your distance from that guy, use bow and arrow, get rid of it that way. Alright, so again, uh, this is just kind of a point of interest here. And, you know, I'm really trying to think of brevity in this video here. It's going to be long, so... I'm just going to kind of introduce you guys to these guys, and... I'll try to get a move on here as quick as I can. Alright, so I'm not going to do this again, Brevity guys, but uh, essentially what they were doing is kind of introducing you to shield surfing, which left trigger, push A, and that'll pop that shield out underneath you there. Alright, so this is the first of our caves, and again, I'm really just here for the bubble gym, so I'll try to breeze through this one, you know, somewhat quickly. And you cannot climb that blue surface, just like on the Great Sky Island, but you can climb around. They gave plenty of wall here to where you can still get your climbing done. And actually there's some pretty lucrative gemstones in here too usually, so I'm going to take a moment and hit those as well. Uh, speaking of the Great Fairy Fountain, it's not like Breath of the Wild where you need a whole bunch of rupees to just open the things. Here, they're actually totally free. You just have to kind of do a bit of a side quest in order to do it, which, you know, hence the reason I'm making the video here. But, um... The rupees will come into play, but not to open the thing. You'll need them to actually do the upgrading. So I don't recommend just going nuts and upgrading everything you possibly can, because the fact you're going to be spending rupees to do this every time you upgrade a new piece of clothing... Oh, and by the way, those get more expensive with each upgrade. So, you know, that can kind of turn into a pretty expensive endeavor, just upgrading a whole bunch of stuff, needlessly. So you can just kind of pick and choose your battles on that. Alright, I don't think I can just plow through here. I guess I'll have to kill these guys. Oh, here! I'll show you guys a cool little trick, since I just popped an icicle down. Check this out. What? That's right, folks. Any kind of ice that you tip your weapon with, it will give you a freezing effect. So super cool. You don't actually have to, you know, use up the rod that we got. You can actually just attach, attach icicles the whole time you're in the, the snowy region here and just get free freezing your enemies out of the deal. Now, if you're wondering, you can take this out of the snowy region. As long as it's not equipped, it won't melt. Um, but as soon as you do take it out, you know, and equip it, and you're, say, in a warmer climate, then it will absolutely start melting. Alright, now again, this is low-level loot, so I'm really not here for that. I just kind of wanted to plow through here and, for one, get my gemstones. Okay, again, I don't know why I took the time to do that just now. I just got done saying that's low-level loot. <laughs> but hey, now you know what's in there. Alright, so, you know, feel free to get that chest. I think it's the same weapon. It's just got, a, you know, some kind of garbage tip on it. But for now, I'm pretty much done with this cave. Got what I came for. And the next cave will have that other uniform item I was mentioning. The cold weather attack power-up. Here earlier in the game, I might actually even wear that for a bit, especially while I'm here. But again, later in the game, it just kind of feels like I'm changing clothes too often, and I prefer to just rely on, uh, you know, other means to up my attack power. Alright, so there's another side quest we can do here real fast. Uh, go ahead and read your lore there. 
And they're just going to kind of point you toward the treasure that's in there, which is that uniform item I mentioned. And you'll actually see these guys in other places too, and they kind of hint to that in the dialogue here. They don't tell you exactly where they're going to be next, but you know they kind of give you an idea. Essentially, as long as you're you know searching caves, you're going to come across these guys no matter what, anyway. Alrighty, so we gave them their glowy stuff that they were asking for, the light bloom seeds. I think this one actually probably has better gemstones in it also. Okay, we got some more Horriblins in here. That's all I'm going to find today in these caves. Feathered spears. Lucky me. Just what I've always wanted. Alright, there's a bubble frog in here somewhere. Not seeing him just yet, but he's in here. Oh yeah, first that uniform item. The whole reason I came over here. she is. So again, I figured, you know, early game, I won't be changing that often at this point. And I don't exactly have the other means right now to get my attack power up. Alright, so I'm trying to get up here and get this bubble frog. As soon as we teleport up there, he's going to kind of be like right in our face, so you have to be relatively quick about it. I oh, don't go down there. Alright. Alright, I thought there were some better gemstones in here, but maybe I was mistaken. But for now, let's go ahead and get out of dodge. Now this should pop us up right where we need to be next. I'm not sure if I'm aimed quite right. And I am not aimed quite right. I need to go to my left just a little bit more and get up top side in here. If it'll let me. Ooh, that's why it wouldn't let me. I forgot about the vines. All right, so now there is a treasure chest up here. I'll show you guys how to get that if you're interested. You're going to need a pine cone to do that. I don't believe I have any yet. I wasn't even thinking that coming up here. But essentially what I would do is throw a pine cone down, light these things on fire, and that gives you a real good updraft boost, and you'd be able to get up there. So I don't believe I have any... Which is super unfortunate. Oh, I do have one. Check that out. Oh, nuts. It wasn't close enough. Okay, so what you might want to do is light these on fire first and then throw your pine cone into it. And again, that'll give you a good strong updraft. You'll be able to fly up there and get your chest. 
All right, so for now, once again, go ahead and do your not train hunting while you're here. And at this point, we can go ahead and go to my marker, our pin here. And welcome to the Gazette. I think that's what it's called. Now this is really what you have to do before you go to the stable up there for the Great Fairy Fountain. So if you're watching this video, it's probably because you got up there, you got stuck, you saw the musicians, but you know, nothing would happen. You talk to them and it just, they just stand there, nothing happens. So what you have to do is you have to talk to these two knuckleheads. And once you get through this dialogue, and I don't necessarily know if you have to, but I talk to him again, he'll be standing outside and then he kind of flies off. But uh, either way, once you do all that, then you can go back to that stable, talk to the musicians, and that'll kind of get the ball rolling on your quest for you there. Okay, so what she's really doing is kind of explaining, you know, the whole deal here. So take a moment and read what she's got to say. And what I'm really interested at some point is going to be the super suit. It gives you the, the ability to climb in the rain, and it's awesome. Unfortunately, it's kind of a later game suit because... You essentially have to find every single stable in the game in order to, you know, get it all. So, um, yeah, it's just time consuming to do that. So I kind of put it out of my mind for the time being. Uh, again, that'll be kind of a later game type of deal. All right. So as you can see, I just talked to Penn again one more time and he just flew off. So while I'm here, I'm going to take a moment and get some goodies. There's always bundles of wood here at the stable, even in Breath of the Wild. Go ahead and, you know, bust up the wood logs here and you'll get more. But from here, I'm actually going to take another moment and go across the way. Uh, Rito Village is right where it always used to be. And you might want to grab a few extra pine cones while you're here. There's quite a lot in this little area. So, you know, walk around and you'll find a couple of octos out there. So beware of the ice octos or the snow octos. Uh, where are my pine cones? All right, so same type of party, guys. You can't climb the blue walls there, so you just have to kind of use a pine cone, get yourself airborne, come across to the side. And there's a couple of treasure chests along the way. Nothing too fabulous. Some extra rupees and whatnot, but I'll show you those here in a moment. Of course, more pine cones to be had. So in case you're wondering, if you're new to the game, but you played Breath of the Wild, you're probably wondering where all the snow came from. Uh, the game will get to that as we kind of pro progress and we start doing the, the regional stuff. It'll uh, make it real clear what's going on here. If you want to make another ice weapon, feel free. A few extra rupees never hurt no one. Okay, now, speaking of Karak seeds, there's actually one right over there. There's actually quite a few right around here, but again, you know, brevity video. I'm, I'm gonna just kind of do what I came here for and get that shrine. But again, you know, quick Karak seed, so... I figured might as well. So this one's probably one of the easiest you'll ever do. There's literally only one balloon moving around instead of like, you know, 25. 
It just kind of flies around in a circular pattern there. All right, so from here, getting back to our shrine, not shrine hunting. Uh, so again, there's Rito Village guys, but I'm not really here for any of that just yet. So just kind of side stuff off to the right, and you'll notice right underneath that bridge that I just crossed, and there's the inn up there to my right, you'll see the shrine come into view. So again, activating the travel gate here will give us a good quick way to get back to this point later on in the game. All right, go ahead and activate your travel gate. Once we do that, we are going to be out of here. So essentially what we're going to do now is teleport back to our Hyrule Castle Shrine. And once you've worked back to Hyrule Castle, just simply head toward our pin that we placed. And once again, we're going to do some not shrine hunting while we're here. Case in point. Not to mention a couple Karak seeds. And also, guys, this river here, it's usually pretty well stocked. Now, we've normally been getting, you know, this low-level stamina stuff. You know, the green mushrooms, the, the stam bulbs. Uh, we've gotten lucky with, you know, a couple of Endura frogs. But in this river, you'll be finding Staminoka bass. And those things are going to be huge for cooking once we start building up our stamina wheels. And you guys already know me, I'm really itching to do that, so, you know, it's kind of why we're doing not shrine hunting right now. But yeah, definitely stock up on those Staminoka bass. I'm not going to do that again, brevity for the video, but all along this river, folks. And in addition to the Staminoka bass, you might even find some mighty carp. And uh, you might also even find some stealth fin trout. So again, just worth your while, kind of look up and down the river here and get your hands on some good fish. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a quick Karak seed. I think I mentioned it. And I'll kind of give you a good idea on the map where we're at here. So there was our Hyrule Castle Shrine. That's the one we just activated. And here's our Karak seed. Uh, one thing about this bridge, and I don't really have the maps up there, so I can't show you the whole route. But look around for a woman running around with like a funny mushroom hat on. You can't miss her. It's like this gigantic green mushroom hat. But uh, she's usually found between this bridge and there's like a pathway or a road that goes over to the stable here. So I usually see her spawning in right in this area. Uh, the reason I'm taking time to mention that is because she'll mark your map for you. She'll show you where a couple of Misko's treasures are. And those are uniform items, guys, so, you know, it's definitely worth a quick detour to go get stuff like that. Alright, so I'm actually going to get back across the river here. Alright, so once you're back on the type side of this bridge here... Oh, wait, I think I just found Mushroom Girl. That's actually the first time I've seen her on this side of the bridge. Now, be careful, guys. Don't venture too far south. And this might not be perfect, but I'm going to mark it anyway. There's one of those hands monsters down here and normally you can kind of run somewhere and you know they'll self kill themselves but here it's like open there's really nowhere to go um so it's just kind of treacherous in that respect so for now i would just avoid going down south too far but since she's here and i just got done talking about her i'll go ahead and do that and i've seen her in several places she's not just here but every time you find her in a given region it only works once, so it's not like you can keep coming back to her in this spot and get more treasures mapped. Uh, you'll have to find her in different locations throughout Hyrule. Alright, so there's Meshi, or Mishi, or whatever her name is. So from here, folks, I'm actually going to go right down here, looking for another Karak seed, and this one's going to be a twofer. I need to find my friend! I think there's some honey over here. Ow, dude. I didn't even do nothing. Okay, it's not honey, it's apples. I got kicked in the teeth by a horse for no reason. Okay, so speaking of Staminoka bass, that might actually be a group of them right there. But again, I'm going to try to resist. Stay strong. Brevity of the video, yada yada yada. But man, I really want those fish. 
What I'll probably do is when I get done with this video segment offline, I'll probably just take a hike up and down the river here and do some fishing because I'm really hurting for cooking ingredients at this point. All right, so as you can see, I picked up our good friend the Karak here, and this one's pretty easy, assuming you've got a fan on you. Um, you can probably, you know, put a whole bunch of these pieces of wood together and make a bridge across the water, but, you know, it takes time, and I prefer to just cook a fan. Oops, I just hit my boat with my weapon, which means I'll probably break my boat when I hit it again. Yep, there it goes. Alright, but as soon as you get him across the river, take him to his friend and you will be good to go. Oh, look at that, still fin trout. Guys, it's getting harder and harder to stay strong. I really want to do some fishing, like, right now. And honestly, if I could toss a Breath of the Wild-style bomb out there and just blow him up and go get him real fast, I would, but... Fishing in this game just ain't so simple. Oh, look at that. Mighty, you know what? I need these. I need it! Because I am really hurting for attack power. So again, guys, just a real good river to, you know, do some fishing, get, get those cooking ingredients built up. Alright, so once you get your Karak Seed, go ahead and head north. And what I'm aiming for is that smoke stack right there, and that's going to be a quick little side quest we can knock out. But before we go over there, there is a treasure chest up there. Uh, you'll have to take out a couple of readies to get to it. But I think it's just a soldier's broadsword right now, so I'm honestly not going to bother with it. But it is there for the taking if you so desire. Okay, now one little safety tip on the mud here. Um, you can actually walk on it for a little ways as you just saw me do, but you cannot jump into it. If you press the jump button and you kind of land into it, he'll sink super fast. So, and you'll, you know, like, you'll get in a walking room. So I just kind of wanted to point that out to y'all real fast. As long as you walk out onto it, or you could even fly out onto it with your glider, you'll be fine. But if you jump into it like I just did, you will not be fine. Oh, check that out. Don't mind if I do. Alright, so from our well, I'm going to go back toward that smoke stack I mentioned. Did I get my gemstone already? I don't think I did. Remember to get your free gemstones from the broken wagons. And we're going to talk to Twiddle D, Twiddle Dumb here. This is a very different Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb, though. Not to be confused with the ones earlier in the video. And all they're really doing is pointing you to that treasure chest out there in the open. And this is one of those chests that can get real complicated if you're trying to build stuff and, you know, all that. I simply just like to kind of fly out here, you know, keeping in mind it's okay to... Whoops. Not do that. I meant to jump. But it's okay to walk on the mud here. Um, assuming you don't land in it like I just did. Okay, now you're going to have to be Johnny on the spot, spamming that A button. But what I like to do, just to avoid making it super complicated, is try to catch it before it falls in the mud. And if it falls in the mud, you can just pick it back up with Ultra Hand and try again, but... Uh, sooner or later, you'll, you'll be able to snag that bad boy. Okay, since we're here, I am absolutely going to go in that cave over there, and I'll, there's also another Karak Seed. Uh, once again, there's a Bubble Gym, just like every other cave in Hyrule here. This Karak Seed, it's really well hidden. They did a good job on that one. Yeah. Alright folks, so go ahead and do some cave diving here. Maybe this is the one I was thinking that had the better gemstones. Yeah, see I tend to get things mixed up sometimes. Oops. I almost let him live a little longer. Eh, 
Yeah, better than usual. I'll take it. So I don't believe I've collected topaz yet. I usually find topaz in this cave. Now watch it make a liar out of me. It's gonna make a liar out of me. That's okay. Okay, Bubble Jim is coming up, and I like to use a better bow for that guy just to make sure I one-shot him. Okay, now there is another bad boy nest in here. It's going to be more Horriblins. And honestly, you know, when you kill them all, that chest across the way, it's going to activate, and there's something low level in there. I think it's like a feathered spear with a really non good tip on it, or something along those lines. Ow, dude. And something along those lines. But again, you know, low level stuff, I'm not really going to take the time to get it. But I do want my quick pickups here, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so going right through to the end. I don't know why there's a lake in here, there's nothing in it. Dude, I did not get topaz, what is up with that? Oh yeah, keep an eye on your back when you're in here. Sometimes a horrible or two or five will walk their way in here. And while you're busy collecting gemstones, they'll slap you in the back of your head and kill you, and you didn't even realize they followed you in in the first place. So yeah, I'm not going to tell you who that happened to. <coughs> Me! <coughs> Excuse me, I hate when that happens. Alright, so once you emerge using Ascend, there's a couple more quick proxies we can scoop up. And I am not paying attention, it's actually out a little further here. All right, so we're going to have to get creative here. Again, just walk, don't jump. Uh, you're going to want to get some high ground here to get a little bit of flying time in. Make sure you can get out of the mud. Get another treasure chest. There's another Karak seat up here somewhere. Ah, there you go, that tower up there. And a few extra rupees never hurt no one. This is one of those Karak seeds where Ascend will your, be your friend. You can actually climb these things, but it's so much quicker to just get the green light and go. Dude, I just went through a piece of wood and it took forever. Like, how thick was that wood? How thick was that piece of wood? Like, really? Okay, once again, some really good fish in here, guys. Now, this is the lake that surrounds the Croc Forest. So, you know, just be aware if you get out there too far, the fog will kind of scoop you up and it'll kick you back to the shore. But um, there's quite a bit of water there that you can do some fishing in. And same type of thing, you can get the stealth fin trout down there, the uh, the mighty, you know, mighty carp or whatever, uh, stamina of a bass, etc. Alright, so from here, I'm actually not going to go up here, because honestly, the loot just isn't great, so I just it's a waste of time for me to do that right now. But if you want, just be ready for a good aerial fight. There's like, I don't know, seven or eight of those birds flying around up there, so you'll, you're going to want to get a good position to get some bow and arrow time in and get those guys out of the sky. And I think a couple of them are actually carrying chests, but again, it's just, you know, kind of low-level stuff right now, so... I'm more interested in the Great Fairy Fountain and Karakseeds at this moment. Okay, got another Karakseed here. You're probably wondering where this Great Fairy Fountain is. It's like taking forever for us to get over here. 
It's right around the corner from where we're at. Matter of fact, we can see it from here. Right there. Alright, so guys, since we're doing not shrine hunting, there's one more travel gate I need to activate here. And you can actually just kind of follow this road heading toward that marker of ours where the stable is. But I'm going to veer off to the left just a little bit. And I'm going to get a little bit of height. Because I'm going to want to fly down. Okay, so there's that stable right in front of us. I'm going to want to fly down to that platform there. There's a quick treasure chest up there we can grab. And there's our not shrine hunting right below. Rocket man! So, fun little trick. Ah, oh, I just did that. That was fun. Fun little trick. You can attach a rocket to your shield and, like, get shot up into the air and open your glider. Now, I don't recommend doing that a lot because you'll go through them very fast. But it is kind of a handy little tool if you're really stuck and you need to get some height. That's a good quick way you could do that. Alright, so we have finally arrived at our stable. So, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, Here's our musicians, and now that we did what we needed to do beforehand, we've got the Birdman standing here. But before I actually get into all that, I'm going to first get a blue pea. Oh, and just so you guys know, earlier on, a few videos ago, I showed you guys how to sneak up on the blue pea with a spear. But headshots actually count. So if you want... To get some flight in, get some headshots in, and you're going to get some pretty good ruby drops doing that. I usually get a red one. I didn't get one this time, which is unfortunate. But I think I missed the head there once or twice. But if you can land all four headshots, nine times out of ten, you're going to get a, a red ruby out of the deal. Okay, another thing about this area, guys, is razor shrooms. Again, attack power. We're hurting for attack power food right now, so... Unfortunately, they're only kind of in onesies and twosies in this area. And you'll have to kind of walk through the woods up there and back and, you know, kind of around the sky chunks and all that. But you will find them out and about. And uh, you'll be able to cook a few attack power meals that way. Oh, there is a, a well here. And I'm not going to take the time to go down there. There's a false wall you have to break. And there, actually, you know what I am because I'm not maxed on hearts. But um, there's a... A hot spring down here you can fill up on hearts for absolutely free. <laughs> Not a bad little deal. So if you want to save the money from staying in the stable, you can always come here and top off for free. Alright, so one more key point while we're in the area. And again, a little bit out of the way, but it's worth our while. There's another bubble gym over there. But since we've already got bubble gyms in our inventory, we can actually clear the side quest right now. And I thought this was actually pretty cool. They did mention Kilton, or Killian, whatever his name is, had a brother in Breath of the Wild. So it's really kind of cool to see them kind of circle back to that in the second game here. Okay, now I can't really skip all this. So I'm just going to kind of stop talking for the time being and get through this part of the game. And then we'll go ahead and get on inside that cave there. Alright folks, so assuming you got through the dialogue options there, and you got to the point where you could say, here, take this. Uh, you have since given him a bubble gem, and he has since given you the bobkin mask. So that kind of gives you a pretty good idea on, A, what you have to do with bubble gems in the game. And B, kind of how you get the masks... Uh, later on. Alright, so moving right along again, not much to this cave, but before you go hauling butt in here, be aware there's going to be some fireproof lizards. Um, so I'm going to kind of, you know, tiptoe in here, so to speak, so I don't scare those guys off. Fireproof lizards are going to be helpful when we get up into the regions where it's going to catch you on fire, like the volcano. So uh, this will just give you a way to make the elixirs to protect yourself against getting caught on fire. Now keep in mind flame resistance is different than heat resistance. 
Uh, somebody did ask a question about that. You know, I have the heat resistance, but I'm still catching on fire. Uh, this right here is what you need to prevent yourself from catching on fire. Uh, later on, we're going to get, uh, you know, some clothing items that'll do the same job. But for right now, just keep this cave in mind as a good spot to check from time to time for those fireproof lizards. Alright folks, so that's pretty much it. I'll get a little bit of height and kind of fly back over toward that stable. And I bet you're all ready for it. Without any further ado, it is now time to get our great fairy fountain. Okay, I think there's a big boss up here somewhere. Bobkin boss. There's also a... Uh, yeah, one of those. I was actually going to skip that, but it's here if you guys want it. Um, it's a pretty easy one to get. Because you've already kind of got a platform there. You know what? I'll just do it. So all you really have to do on this one is butt that thing right up against the sign. Go ahead and attach that bad boy. And talk to Mr. What's-His-Name. You know, I never even used the sleepover tickets the entire time I've been playing this game. Because I never want to give up the chance to get pony points. I don't even know if there's something you get for using the sleep tickets. Alright, so anyway, once again, just kind of, you know, quick way back, get some height fly. Uh, and again, check this lake for some good fishing. There's also a treasure chest in there. Nothing great, but it is there for your taking if you want it. There's also a croc seed across the way. Right there in the open mouth of that cave, or that skull, there's a rock to pick up. But I know you've waited long enough, so I'll just go ahead and get to work here. Go ahead and talk to the musicians and the birdman. And I'll get some dialogue options going here, and they'll kind of explain what's going on. They need help, yada, yada, yada. So pretty straightforward once you, you know, get the birdman in place. Whoops. I wasn't paying attention there. I hope that didn't make me have to repeat all that. Okay, good. It activated the side quest. Okay, so once you get your side quest activated here, go ahead and fix the wagon. And then go ahead and check your horse out and make sure you take the time to put that tow hitch on it or the, the harness, whatever it's called. Oh yeah, and every time you find a new stable, you're going to get a pony point automatically. So that's pretty cool too. All right, so once you've got your harness attached there, go ahead and ride your horse over to the front part, whoop, over to the front part of the wagon there. Now you can actually back the horse up if you aim right, which I'm not. And then that'll get that kind of wooden block as close as possible to the wagon. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but keep in mind if it's not on there secure, sometimes it'll break off. And that's really bad when you're already kind of going uphill, you know, and then you have to chase the wagon all the way down the hill and start over. Oops, I'm not paying attention once again. Yeah, make sure you tell them I'll take you. And once they all jump in the wagon there, you're free to go. Now be careful not to just kind of take off, especially if you have a, a four-star speed horse. Uh, the speed alone can kind of break that, can break the hitch off. So just to make sure that doesn't happen to me, and then I waste a bunch of your time watching me go chase my wagon down the hill, I'll just go ahead and go cruising speed here. But really all you have to do is ride up right toward the Great Fairy Fountain. And remember, you don't need rupees yet, but you'll need them when you start doing the upgrading. All right, guys, I really hope that helped you all out. Hope it was fun. Best of luck to you and happy hunting.